Hi there, my name is James from Atmos UAV and what you can see on the screen there is the Marlin VTOL Servang drone. What we're going to be looking into today is planning one of these magnificent Servang flights with the Marlin drone and we do that using the in-house developed Navigator software. The Navigator software which you can see coming up on your screen just now has been designed to be super easy to use so let's dive into it now. So the first thing I'm going to do from this first screen to plan a flight is to zero into our survey location. I can just enter that into the search bar here in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Just simply need to scroll over to my survey area and then set the home location which is our takeoff and landing location for the drone flight. Simply click on the map. And then what I can do now is set my survey area. We're going to set that as a simple polygon. And then to set the vertices of the polygon, all I need to do is just click on the screen. The flight lines are going to be generated automatically after that. To make my flight lines a little bit more efficient, I can adjust the direction to make sure they go along the sides of our polygon. You can see I can also adjust the overlap to increase or decrease the space between the flight lines. We usually keep it at 60% for our flights. I can also set a cross pattern for better oblique imagery or invert the direction of the flight lines. I can also set different types of routes for the drone to fly. First that you can use is basic in which the drone just goes from one to two to three perfectly sequentially. I can also choose interlaced in which the drone takes a slightly wider turn by skipping one line. Or I can choose dynamic where the drone takes a slightly longer turn even still by skipping two lines every turn. Typically we'll stick with dynamic as that chooses as that results in the best data. Next we can set our GSD or our altitudes, they're both connected. You can see with the RX-1 120 meters is equivalent to 1.5 centimeters and see that adjusting the mapping altitude also adjusts the spacing between the flight lines. For this flight we'll just keep it at 120 meters. We can also adjust our switch to airplane and switch to helicopter altitudes here as well. Once our flight plan's set, we can check the length of the flight lines and also the altitude of each individual flight line if we're using terrain mapping. And then finally, our safety settings. I can set a geofence, which is essentially the radius at which the drone hits it, it will automatically return to home. You can set that to be just outside your survey area. A geofence ceiling works similarly. It sets a maximum altitude that the drone can fly. A return on low battery percentage is the percentage at which the drone will automatically return to home. And a return on lost link is the basically the setting that allows the drone to come home if the radio link is lost for more than one minute. So this is how you plan a flight which is for a normal polygon survey area. What I'll go into now is to plan a corridor flight. So if you happen to be mapping a road or a river or something that is a long slender flight region, uh, the corridor mapping uh, option is going to be much better to accomplish that survey. So the start is exactly the same as we did before. We set our home location, but instead of clicking polygon, we click corridor. All you need to do is to click on the map and the vertexes of your corridor will be created and the flight lines will come up on the screen. You can adjust the width of the corridor and the flight lines will be automatically increased or decreased to be able to take a survey of that area. You can also adjust the side lap and again that will adjust the distance between the individual flight lines. Also you can keep this at 60%. What you can see is this is smart corridor mapping. The drone will fly a continuous line and take photos the whole way through. Uh, you can also adjust it such that the drone resets its flight path uh, through every turn or that it takes each individual group uh, in its entirety before moving on to the next one. 
whichever is the best for your survey, but optimized is generally great data whilst also having an efficient flight time. And so that is how you plan either a polygon or corridor mapping flight. And from here, you can move on to your pre-flight checklist and then go off and accomplish your survey. For any questions or for any more information, you can always contact us at sales at atmosuav.com and we'll be happy to help. Thank you.